Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. Hello and welcome to a new podcast, The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Women's cricket is on the up. And in today's podcast, I'm pleased to be with Catherine Leng, former England Test and One Day International player of the 1990s and early 2000s. How are you today, Catherine? Oh, hello, Stephen. I'm, I'm great, thank you. Thanks very much for the, for the invite. I'm, uh, I'm here in sunny Brighton on, on the south coast today. So, Well, it, um, it's not sunny here. Oh, that's a shame. No, we, we, had a, a, we had hailstorm yesterday and it's, it's dark and miserable here at the moment. It's uh, it's practically tropical here compared to uh, Leeds, I think. I know where you are. No, we're in Cambridgeshire, not Leeds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk today about uh, your life in cricket. But to start with, I wanted to talk about the subject of women's cricket. And uh, where do you think that women's cricket is today compared to where it was when you started playing for England back in 1995? It's it's a good question because I think a lot of people would answer that it's so much better. It's come on leaps and bounds. There's obviously the girls are professional now and there's a lot of money involved. Um, Whereas when I started out in 1995, I had to pay for my own England uniform. Fortunately, the Yorkshire Bank sponsored me and bought my blazer for me and um, everything like that. So in comparison, it, it's very different on the surface. But I think talent wise, you know, it's much of a much really. Um, I played a lot uh, against a lot of very talented women cricketers in 1995. And I play um, Premier League cricket now down here in Brighton. Um you know, and I, I play against a similar talent down here now. So I think in terms of, you know, monetary, obviously it's very different. Fitness, the girls have a lot more time to spend, um, you know, in the gym than we we ever did when, you know, we held, some of us had to hold jobs down in 95. But I think in terms of talent, Um, I think there's always been a lot of talent in women's cricket in the 1920s to to the 2020s. So So you think some of it is profile because it is a very big year for women's cricket because you've got uh, teams playing in the 100 alongside the men at at the test grounds. Yeah. And as you say, there are now professional uh, women's cricketers in in this country. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to the launch of the hundred is just it's super exciting. Um, I mean, and now a lot of old cricketers will turn in their grave. I'm uh, and I I would I'm a bit of a test fan myself, really. But I can see the pull of uh, the shorter game to you know friends and colleagues that don't necessarily enjoy cricket. Um, a whole day of it but they will you know they'll pop down to the Sussex County ground and watch a T20 on a Friday night with a few drinks and the rest of the family so I think in terms of traditionalists you know not so good for them but I think for the wider audience and the short stuff is is brilliant you know it's just a shame I never got to play 2020 because I think my style of play would have you know would have been good for it it started a few years after I retired so yeah and the uh, hundreds going to give more exposure to women's cricket because some of the games are going to be on BBC television which will make a difference as well yeah which is which is great because you know obviously 
again, it's reaching the wider audience and it's a shorter game. It's not, it's not all day. Um, and hopefully they'll pick up, you know, new viewers and it will just snowball on from there, really. You talked about just briefly about the fact that you enjoy test cricket for women's test cricket. And this year, England are playing India in a test match, a one-off test match at Bristol in June. Do you think there's a future for women's test cricket? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. It might be, you know, that boat might have sailed now for the women's game, I'm afraid. I just think um, for the immediate future, women's test cricket won't draw the crowds in. But obviously, you know, down the line, once it gets its, um, you know, diehard fans, then, you know, we could we could be looking at bigger crowds for test cricket. But I think that's a little bit down the line. But they, I think they should just, they should keep playing. I think it's good for your game, really. You have to adapt and, you know, we all know, um, when we're batting, you have to adapt to certain situations and, you know, it keeps you on your toes a little bit, doesn't it? So it's nice you... to bat for a long time as well. I don't know what well, the longest used... you've batted or... <laughs> I used to like to bat for a long time. And oh, I know there you, we go. I know you did when you scored your test century and we'll come on to that later. But where Thank do you, you think, um, finally on the women's uh, uh, cricket angle, where do you think women's cricket will be, say, in 10 years' time? Well, the um, best case scenario is that it's matching, you know, the men's crowds, really. Um, and the girls are very well looked after at um, top level, but you just want, you want a wider pa- participation at grassroots. And I think, you know, the biggest dream probably is, you know, that it's cricket for all, for all girls. Well, thank you for those thoughts. But now we're going to talk about your own cricketing career. You were born in Pudsey, which is obviously a, a cricket hotbed in Yorkshire. How did you get into cricket yourself? <laughs> it's, I'm afraid it's a bit of a cliche now, um, but a family. So dad's played, brother played, cousins played, uh, uncle played for Ireland. So if you can't beat them, join them type thing. You know, mum did the teas. It was every weekend in summer. So, yeah. And where were you playing your, did you start playing club cricket? Um, I mean, it started before that. It started at, at, at junior school. We had a very forward thinking PE teacher, Mr. Childs. And um, I'd been to one of his play schemes that he ran in, in the summer. And he said, right, you're playing, you're playing cricket for South Royal Juniors when you go you know, step up from the infant school. So it started at school and then I went to a couple of Bradford League clubs that were affiliated where my brother played and dad played. And I didn't I didn't really enjoy it until Putsy St. Lawrence, um, one of the coaches there invited me. And I don't, I don't know why, I just really enjoyed, I just enjoyed it up there. I, went up on a Friday night and there must have been about 150 other kids in age groups and, you know, just sort of like joined in with them and and really enjoyed it. So so were you playing against lots of boys as well? Yeah, so it's, I think there might have been one of the girl at that time, but, but yeah, it was just, you know, just sort of like... Um, on a Saturday, my brother would look after me whilst dad was on the pitch and mum was doing the teas reluctantly because she liked watching, but she always got roped in. Um, so I had to, you know, go around the back of the cars and bowl and bat and field quite a lot. So, you know, it was just it was just that really. It was something to do on a Friday night. I thoroughly enjoyed it though. Moving on, you you started playing, I've looked up for Yorkshire women. At about 15? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, it just yeah. it happened really quickly because, you know, gone up through the ranks at St. Lawrence uh, from under 10s, under 12s, under 13s, under 15s. Actually got to play under 17s as well, which was, you know, the boys had got very big and fast by then. 
Um, but I did manage to hold my own a little bit, turned into a spinner rather than a quick bowler and played at school as well from the age of about 13. So I'd I'd sort of like played at some fairly good levels and, and a bit of, um, I think I might have played in the Dales Council men's league when I was 13, 14 as well. So, um, and then all of a sudden I find myself picked for the Yorkshire, Yorkshire women's squad, which was, you know, uh, a very good team in its day. So you were very, very used to playing against men and then playing for or playing against and with men and playing for Yorkshire women, they must have been a lot older than yourself at 15. Yeah. Um, and it was a smaller ball as well. Uh, so I needed to adapt to that. But I'd there'd been some uh, nets that I'd gone to at Yorkshire, the Pathway to Excellence, it was called, run by um, a guy called Ralph Middlebrook. Um, he's quite well known, sort of like in the Leeds, Yorkshire area. They'd set some nets up and that's how I got into it. It was a bit strange, actually, you know, turning up to cricket nets with 30 or 40 other girls and women, really, because I'd just been used to sort of like mucking in with the boys. Yorkshire won the uh, national championship uh, in 93 and 94 when, it, when you were part of the team then. And then in yeah. 1995, you made your England debut against uh, the Netherlands in Dublin. This is a one day international. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a bit. The England women had won the World Cup in England in 1993. Um, the BBC televised it at Lords, and and I was in the crowd watching the final. Um, and I'd I'd made the training squad for that 93 team, but ne- ne- I didn't make the the final cut. And I think I'd scored. I played in some warm-up games and I'd scored 100 at um, Bradford Park Avenue against them and a 70. So I was sort of on the periphery in 93. And then after they'd won the World Cup, uh, a lot of the girls, you know, retired. They felt that they'd reached pinnacle of their career. So some young uns got a bit of a chance. I think there were quite a few of us made our debut and... We didn't have to go too far to do it either, which was good. Yeah, just popped over to Ireland and played in the European Cup. I had a fantastic week, really. Yeah, your debut was on the 18th of July, 1995. Oh, gosh. You got thir- 32 not out. You got uh, one for 13. England won easily. And as you say, England went on to beat Ireland in the final. Yeah, I remember it uh, quite well because... What was good about it is that Yorkshire women had toured Ireland quite a lot before then and Yorkshire junior women. So I didn't really feel like a fish out of water going to a different country, in inverted commas. So, um, and I knew some of the, I knew a couple of the Dutch team because they played over in England and I knew, um, got some quite good um, friends in the Irish team as well. So no, it was good. They're always very hospitable, the Irish, the the Irish uh, team. So, so yeah, it was good. Good place to start then. And then you were selected for a Test and One Day tour for England to go to India. You mm. must have uh, must have helped your legs spin bowling. Oh, it was it was a dream come true. How can a leg spinner not love the conditions of India? It you know, it's out of this world. I think it was for seven weeks. It it was very tough because I think we'd been the first women's tour for a number of years. So it was all very new and fresh to us and to the uh, BCCI. Um, Or they may have had their own Women's Cricket of India Association, I think. Um, We literally went, I can't even tell you everywhere that I went because it was... You know, we were either on an overnight train or a plane or on a rickety coach or, um, yeah, it was uh, a really, really good experience. A lot of time off work as well from the bank. 
yeah, they, I rarely fell on my feet with them because they had their own cricket stroke sports grounds, did the Yorkshire Bank. So they were super keen to, um, I think I they let me go and kept my, my pay as well. So I always used all my holiday up. I don't think I had a day's holiday for five years or something, but it was a very, very small sacrifice. But yeah, they did. They gave me time off with pay, which was incredibly lucky. And I still had a job to come back to as well. Oh, very good, yeah. And the following summer against New Zealand at Scarborough, you scored 144, batting at number seven. <laughs> that must have been a special day to score a test century. Yeah, I'd just been at Yorkshire, I think. Doing it on Yorkshire turf was fantastic. It, I just, um, memories of um, being really pleased we were batting first because um, I forgot, I, the night before I had a fish and chip dinner um, as match preparation and then the day of the match, we won the toss. It was like, great, we're batting. I can have a bit of a... A bit of a sit down, watch some cricket at the lovely pavilion that is Scarborough. And, you know, all these girls kept coming past <laughs> from the pitch. And I was like, hang on a minute. It's before lunch. I think I might need to put my pads on. Um, and at, at the time I went in, um, one of the girls, Barbara Daniels, was batting absolutely beautifully. And just my. Um, it was a bit of a Jeff Boycott innings, really, because my my um, job was just to keep her. He didn't keep people on strike. He took the strike. But it was to just value my wicket, really. So it was just to su- support her. I didn't have to worry about getting runs because she was getting them. So I, I could I just really bedded myself in. And uh, watched her back from the other end, really. But it's very slow, very, very slow innings for me. And I think I maybe ended up with about 80 not out. At the yeah, end I was going to say you were, you were actually, you were 90 not out overnight. So mm. you must have been nervous going into the next morning. <sighs> yeah, I did. I remember not sleeping very much. We got a this is how long ago it was a CD. I got a new CD. I got um, Ocean Colour Scene, Mersley Shoals, and I played that all night, or what seemed like it. But, yeah, and the the Kiwis didn't give that 10 runs to me very easily. They said it was their job that morning to keep me from getting 100. And to score it in Yorkshire must have been probably one of the highlights of your career. Yeah, de- definitely, without... A doubt, really. Yeah, it's very, very special to me. Well, in 1997, you then played in the World Cup in India, where England reached the semi-finals and lost to New Zealand. And looking up, and I can see your face now, New Zealand got 175 for six, and England at one stage were 100 for three, and we finished 20 runs short. Is that a game that England should have won? Yeah, uh, I think there was a little bit of controversy about the over rate. I think we got a couple of overs taken off us. I just remember it being dogged a little bit by um, things like that, just uncontrollables, really. So, yeah, we should have won it. I think at one point, myself and Melissa Reynard's Yorkshire colleague, we're batting. I, I could feel it. We had it, you know, in the palm of our hands and maybe just a bit a bit more luck that day. It would have gone our, gone our way. But, yeah, we, sh- we should have won that game, really. Because England obviously were, were World Cup holders going into the competition as well. Yeah, it's, it was very disappointing. But, uh, but, you know, to reach the World Cup semi-finals was was fabulous, you know, a really good experience. Well, I just want to break off from your England career because, as you've said earlier, you've played a lot of cricket against men and boys, but uh, 
in 1999, you played for the Yorkshire Bank in the Bradford League in, I think, April that year against Bradford and Bingley. How did yeah. that come about? And what was it like playing against men in 1999? I don't... I, someone asked me this a while back. I don't... Well, I guess it was a mixture of... Um, the first team were a little bit short and they sort of needed someone who... Could, no, I was going to say someone that could hold a bat and that's probably not giving me, I'm not giving myself any credit, but yeah, um, I I got to play. So, and it was again, I remember, you know, it's against players that I'd uh, been in the score box when my dad was playing and I'd watch them, um, Richard McCarthy, who's a Bradford League legend up there, Um a Gareth Batty was playing that day. Just trying to remember, you know, a few names um, that were playing for a good Bradford and Bingley side. And I think I got to bat in the end and all I needed to do was uh, we were playing winning, losing draws um, at that stage. So all I needed to do was keep keep my wicket. And I just remember Richard McCarthy um virtually with his run up at the um sight screen um just sort of like putting his hands in the air going well where do I bowl it because <laughs> he he just he was you know a bit stumped because so yeah I think at one point he bowled one so fast it bounced over the top of my stumps and I might have been sat on the square leg umpire's knee a little bit he was pretty rapid um you're an England player at that time so what sort of reception you got when you're on the field with the men? I think it was just um they were just a bit I'd already been playing a lot of second team cricket and you know word word gets round and you know I played um I guess really Bradford and Bingley, it's a lovely ground. Um I'd gone all through the juniors, so there were I was playing against um men that I'd grown up you know playing in junior cricket and so I don't suppose it was that much of a surprise but I think you know for for Richard or fast bowlers they just weren't quite sure what what to what to bowl at me and I think I remember someone saying we'll just bowl at a stumps Um, which I think he had problems doing. Uh, so, yeah, I got picked again to play the next week. And again, it, it was it was against um, a team called East Bailey who had another legend, uh, Murphy Walwyn, playing. Um, unfo- unfortunately, we were uh, rained off. But I think he said something like, I was looking forward to knocking you block off today when we were in the bar afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you, yeah. made his, you made history uh, and, and good for you. And also in 2001, you became the first woman to play inter-UCCE cricket as well. Can you just explain what that is to listeners yeah. as well? So it's uh, currently it's a, um, the MCC you so it's uh un- six universities um oxford cambridge lees bradford cardiff durham have i missed one out yeah i spoke to chris scott because chris was to do with yeah. Cam- cambridge here yeah, or the uh, yeah that's it cambridge, sorry yeah. i forgot the yeah. most important one didn't i then that's right yeah sorry about that Stephen. <laughs> but you you played in the in the inter so is that in the actual the- at the university yeah yeah, so it was um, those six universities got funding to set up uh, specialist cricket centres for um, just to bridge a bit of a gap, I suppose, between that age group of under 19s to county cricket, to second team county cricket, and then on to first team cricket. So, yeah, so I was the first intake of, of that programme. And um, Kevin Sharp was was leading the Leeds Bradford centre, um, and he he let me alongside two other girls train week in week out with the boys, and that meant we got um, you know use of the gym. We got 
uh, specialist one-to-one coaching, you know, just stuff that we'd not really had before. So it it really, obviously, it really improved my game. And as, um, you know, on that program, um, those uh, people like Chris Elston, who I think played at Yorkshire for a while, and, you know, it was quite quite a good good standard so you were practicing uh, and playing with with those people at the university yeah yeah just you know week in week out um and you know playing warm-up matches and things like that and part of um the warm-up matches for the counties so for example for yorkshire would be a traditional match against the M- the mccu as such um and i never made made the cut for one of those games but I did so I did play against Oxford University which you know was a first class county in inverted commas at at that time and I played against Loughborough as well so I played a couple of um two or three matches for them um but we had a women's team as well so it was you know I had a lot of juggling to do and you were doing a a degree course while you're still still working for the bank is that is that what was happening? Yeah, so I'd sort of um, I ditched the bank by then. I decided I couldn't get any further in the bank because I kept going away on tour. And I was thinking, you know, I really need to think about a career and getting some solid qualifications behind me. And this MCCU came up. Um, and I, I spoke to uh, Durham and Loughborough about going there. Um, I wanted to do business management and literally the best course I could find was at Bradford University School of Management so I went there so you know I studied and played a heck of a lot of cricket which was brilliant but again I kept my job in the bank and you know just worked for them when I could in various different branches just to sort of like get a bit of money together really Sounds like you had the best of both worlds, but you then, uh, just going back to your England career, you played in the 2000 World Cup as an opening batsman. Is that something you like doing as an opening batsman? That's a very good question because I sort of fell into it, really. Um, I think because I was used to the uh, batting against pace, they wanted me to open no one else really wanted to open. And I thought, actually, why not? Um, you know, I should accept the challenge. And I don't think necessarily, I think I'd have been better batting, you know, four or five, actually. But um, I set myself a challenge that, um, you know, what you can't really turn down being asked to open the batting for England, can you? Not really, no. No. Um, well, you were opening with Charlotte Edwards sometimes as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had various partners, but yeah, Charlotte was was one of them, and she, you know, she was of similar. Uh, I'd say cricket in pedigree, really. You know, dad played, brother played. She grew up in boys' cricket, so so yeah. Well, you last played for England in Test and One Day Internationals in early 2003. You went on an Ashes tour. How do you look back on your international c- career? And did it end suddenly or had you chosen not to play again? Or I know you've got um, to be selected. But, uh... Yeah, well, that, that was it. I think it got to a point I didn't choose. I got, I, I got deselected, if that's a word. Um, but I think if I look back... You know, I played for pretty much 10 years or so, or I was on the scene for 10 years and saw a lot and did a lot and got a degree and have a lot of fantastic experiences. But I think I was just doing too much. So uh, the the England women's team had joined, they got lottery funding. So uh, with that, you had to train it's strength and conditioning training three times a week. Um, And then I was on obviously the boys program for attending training sessions for them. I was running the women's MCCU team. I was doing it 
uh, university exams and and I was working in the bank and I had a couple of other jobs to um, just try and, you know, get a bit of money together. So I, I literally, I think I'd just taken on too much and um, my fitness went downhill a little bit because I was just trying to juggle everything and it just seemed like I'd had a good run and the selectors rang, rang me at one night. I had an exam, my final exam, university exam the next day and, I said, oh, you know, you're not picked for the team for the next tour. And I said, oh, but would you still consider me for the training squads, which was about 24 girls? And they said, we've not picked you for the training squad either. And I just thought, I think I think it's time to make a big decision, really, um, because I can't keep juggling everything. So, yeah, it was a tough, tough decision, but you know, thinking back, I think it was the right one. It sounds like you had a lot on your plate from what you're saying, although you did score <laughs> yeah. 80 in your last one down to national. Yeah. Uh, but you, you carried on playing cricket. So you're still playing for Yorkshire women. And uh, I've read that you've played Southern League Premier cricket until 2016. Is that right? Yeah. So um, I played for Yorkshire women for, I think we won the county championships maybe in 2004 or something like that and then um I gave that up um and then I had a break um and I moved uh, to Hertfordshire I'm just trying to think maybe around about 2010 and a club rang me up and said oh we hear you down south <laughs> and I said oh um I'll play if you're really desperate and Sure, and I just I joined Hayes Cricket Club in Kent, and what a fabulous club! Um, you know, really family orientated, um, and you know, just a really nice bunch of people. And I I started to enjoy cricket again, and I think we won the league. They'd just gone up a league, and I think we won the league in my second season, which was brilliant. It's funny how when someone moves to an area, they still soon find out there's a good cricketer about, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. 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 No, it was good. They, they're they a bit of a, a lifesaver for me too. That's quite a dramatic word actually. But um, I I just started a new job and I was working really hard, you know, trying to establish myself in this job. And, and it was just such a fantastic release to go and play in cricket on a Sunday and um you know with a nice bunch of people with no pressure of you know there might be a selector you know looking out the bushes somewhere or my scores will be analyzed and you know stuff like that so I rediscovered um cricket again really you forget well you don't forget you don't consider those things as a club player when you're moving around the first, second and third teams, things like that, that when you're an international player that, you know, really what your scores get dictate whether you get picked or you don't get picked. Yeah. Yeah. So you certainly, you know, you see different perspectives and different um, levels and, you know, even leagues and things like that. And have you stopped playing completely now or do you still have the odd game? Oh, I did get asked to play actually last weekend. Uh, <laughs> it's so difficult, um, but yeah, I've, I've been playing in Brighton, and again, you know, I found a really nice bunch of girls. It's a mixture of some really very talented junior cricketers, um, some intermediate girls that, that play who are very talented, but just you know have picked the game up coming from hockey or coming from somewhere else. And then there's what we call two or three of us oldies, you know, that have played a long time ago at England level. And um, and it's just so nice to be able to just sort of like sit back and watch the young ones do it so and you, then maybe score a few runs at the same time. So you haven't actually officially retired yet then, no? No, I don't think I'll be allowed to. <laughs> So you will you will put the pads on sometime in 2021, you think, yeah. And I hope so. I think, you know, and actually the past 
in the past year haven't haven't been to the gym uh you know uh, people who knew me 20 years ago probably fall off their chairs but fitness is important when when you play you need you know you do need to be relatively fit I think um and so yeah I'd just like to be in the gym a little bit more and just get a bit fitter to play I think it's still got that really you know the need to do really well uh, um, I'm sure you have when you're an ex-England when you're an ex-England <laughs> player it, it's a bit like my mind's my mind is at the ball, but my body hasn't got there yet. <laughs> type thing. <laughs> so. and, and where are you working now? Uh, so I'm working um, for an independent school called Brighton College um, as a commercial manager. So doing um, well, not at the minute because hospitality is um, quite slow at the minute. But doing things like weddings and letting the facilities and and things like that so yeah I really enjoy it and do you still follow the game closely and watch cricket when you can as well yeah I like I said before there's nothing better than you know after work on a Friday being able to go down to the Sussex County ground and and watch and have a couple of drinks um and I've watched uh, quite a bit of um sort of like the women's super league uh, whenever it's been in Sussex um, and hopefully get to some of the 100 games if I can. I, th- I think there's two or three fixtures this year at, at Hove at the Sussex County Ground that um, it's such a good ground for women's cricket, I think, um, that, um, yeah, I'll be definitely trying to get the day off work to go to go down there. Oh, you're still looking for favours from the your employees then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just maybe be book it in advance. Yeah. I've not been to, to Hove, so it always looks very nice yeah. on the television, quite a homely ground, yeah, but I've not actually been to a game there. It's it's just, you know, nice. Obviously, play, I've played it like the Gabba and big stadiums in India and New Zealand and... It, it's just, I suppose it reminds me a little bit of the old Headingley. It's it's very, it, you know, when you sit in, in the front seats, you're right in the thick of the game a little bit. It's, um, yeah, it's it's really nice ground. Well, thank you very much today for sharing your cricketing story and your experiences. You've certainly played at some famous grounds around the world. And... Um, I know you've got the electricians in there today, so they, ha- yeah, sorry, they haven't interrupted the podcast, which is uh, good. which is good. Although I did hear the doorbell go once, I wonder whether that. Yeah, was I'm sorry about that. I think it, it was his mate bringing the tea. I think so. It was an important right. doorbell call. Oh, definitely, yeah. And um, thank you very much for being on the paddock and the pavilion. And um, hopefully, you'll get to play cricket again this summer. Thank you. And thanks for not asking me any horse racing questions. I appreciate it. That's my pleasure. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and now on Instagram at The Pad and Pad. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Sports Social Podcast Network.